Chapter 9, Race to the Finish Dove had to practically pull Mari off the vine, but she made it across in one piece. Sage was next, and Russell wasn't surprised when she landed on the other bank with a graceful release. Just as she whipped the vine back his way, he heard the puttering of a motor nearby. Then the motor stopped. It's another team, he yelled. They just docked. You guys have to move. I'll catch up. He was surprised when they didn't need convincing. The rest of his team took off on a narrow path through ferns and palms. The raindrops had increased to jungle size. Russell had never been this wet with his clothes on. He wiped his eyes and looked at the gully ahead. Russell had given everyone else a push. Now he had to get himself across. He needed a running start. He stepped back and then took off. His feet thudded against the ground and his upper arms tensed as he pulled himself onto the vine, his blistered hands throbbing. There wasn't time to feel the wind in his hair. The vine was swinging back before he knew it. Russell let go and skidded down the far side of the gully, dropping closer and closer to the piranha pool. His fingers grasped a loose root, then another, and he scrambled up to high ground. He lay on his back for a moment savoring the taste of dirt in his mouth. He wasn't just wet now, he was caked in mud. It took the calls of unfamiliar voices to remind him that he wasn't on the football field. No, he was on the first leg of the wild life, just steps from the day's final clue. He crawled to his knees, to his feet, picking up pace as he passed the first flag on the far side of the gully. The piranhas hadn't gotten a piece of him, and he wasn't going to let the other racers either. He had to meet up with his team. He could still taste the dirt as he ran up a steep flight of stone stairs. When he reached the top, he realized he was standing on an overhang that looked out on a waterfall. There was a wooden railing only feet from the gushing water. At first, Russell just wanted to marvel at the sight. but. Bull Gordon stood right in front of the waterfall. Off to his right was the green team. The other members of the red team were off to his left. Russell, Bull announced. Welcome. Now that the entire red team is here, I can announce that you are the second to arrive. Russell felt his teeth grit with a smile, but his teammates were serious. Bull continued. The green team was first, but they have failed to answer the final clue. I will give it to you. We'll see if your team can answer it. As soon as Bull Gordon handed Russell the envelope, his three teammates huddled close. With trembling fingers, he ripped it open. Hurry, 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 Sage chanted nervously. At the top of the card was the same logo that had been on the flags. Directly below was the clue. Straight toward the heavens, an umbrella of green, almost entire ecosystem, alive in one tree. Russell blinked and thought about the last two lines. An ecosystem meant that it was a community of living things that all worked together. A healthy ecosystem is balanced. Mari looked at him, hopeful. You know it, don't you? Yeah, Russell said. I think I do. He told his teammates what he remembered. He remembered the tree they saw in the leafy canopy with the brom bromeliad that was a frog nursery. It grew hundreds of feet tall and held eagle nests in its top branches. It was also the kind of tree where he had Mari, where he and Mari had hid among the thousands of insects when the green team had followed them. The four kids approached Bull Gordon together. Russell looked at each teammate in turn. They all nodded. Is it the Kapok tree? He asked, his voice lifting on the last word. Bull Gordon raised his scarred chin. Indeed it is, he said. Team Red, you are the first to complete this leg of the race. You will have a head start on the next leg. Russell felt chills start in his shoulders and branch out in every direction. The Red team didn't yelp or cheer, but they all exchanged hugs. They had done it. That's not fair, Jaden said, loud enough for everyone to hear. The answer was a kind of tree, not an animal. This is supposed to be about wildlife. The red team paused their small celebration. Everyone looked to the host. 
I tend to think an animal's habitat is very important, Bull Gordon said to the entire group, his thumbs punching through his belt loops. The kapok tree provides food and homes to countless rainforest creatures. It is the perfect example of how all organisms in an ecosystem are connected and rely on each other, on one another. Russell let out a sigh and noticed Sage studying him. I figured it out, she said. What? Russell asked. What I asked you earlier, what you have to offer. Russell thought back to the day before. It seemed so long ago. You know, what it means to be on a team, Sage said. And that's all what we could ask for. Thanks. Thanks to you too, Russell replied, laughing it off. But he meant it. It mattered. One by one, the members of the green team came up to congratulate him. At least one of us came in first, Damien said with a friendly high five. We're all in this together after all, man. Russell gave an uncertain nod. When Dallas approached, he wore his typical post-game grin. He patted Russell on the shoulder. Glad your team is solid, he said. Maybe we can work together on the next leg. Maybe, replied Russell, but he didn't look his old friend in the eye. Dallas had cheated, and Russell didn't know what to do about it. It wasn't right. They shouldn't get away with it, but Russell didn't want the green team to be kicked out of the race either. He'd been friends with them for a long time, and he didn't want the race to change that. Instead, his gaze turned to Mari, Deb, and Sage, his new team, his new friends. He hoped that if they ever found out what he knew, they wouldn't be too disappointed in him. He could hear the yells of another group approaching. Who knew? Maybe that team would be their, their real competition on the next leg. Together, the red team had survived and succeeded in the rainforest, and Russell was already looking forward to what would come next. Want to know what happens when the wildlife moves to the Great Barrier Reef? Read on for a glimpse of the next race course in Race the Wild Great Reef Games.